review factoring. And um, we're going to review factoring today, and I have three examples here. Um, hopefully you remember factoring. If not, hopefully this will spark some memory to you. Okay, so the first one, these are trinomials, and we're going to factor this. This is going to factor into two binomials. And because of the x squared here, we're going to have an x and an x right here. Now, our other two numbers have to come from the 6. We need these two numbers to multiply to give me 6 and at the same time add to give me 5. Well, if I think hard enough, I know that that would be positive 2 and positive 3. And so a positive 2 goes here and a positive 3 goes there. Now this is correct, but we should always check it by FOIL. And so if I multiply this out, I get an x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6, which is going to give me an x squared plus 5x plus 6. So it checks. So the factors for this first trinomial are right there. All right, now for the second trinomial, it's a little bit different. We're going to use a method that I have termed and other mathematicians have termed bottoms up. And so this particular method is also known as the new AC method. And so here we go on this one. And the first thing I'm going to do is take A and multiply it by C. So I'm going to take the 2 and we'll multiply it by 5. And this is going to change my problem to x squared minus 9x minus 10. Now I know it's going to factor into the binomials just like the previous problem with an x and an x there. But since I multiplied the 2 times the 5, I'm going to have to come in and divide by 2 when I'm done. Okay, so now this is what we're going to do now. Now we're going to find our two numbers. I need two numbers that are going to multiply to give me 10 or negative 10 and are going to add to give me negative 9. And that's going to be 10 and 1, or should I say negative 10 and positive 1. Those are my two numbers. So a negative 10 and a positive 1. Now, because of that divide by 2, this factor is going to turn into x minus 5. The other one has a fraction, and so we say bottoms up when we have a fraction. The 2 is going to come and live next to that x, and so it's going to be a 2x plus 1. Again, we're going to check this. We always check, and this is going to give me a 2x squared plus x minus 10x minus 5, which is going to give me a 2x squared minus 9x minus 5, and that is exactly what we got. So my factors are x minus 5 and 2x plus 1. Okay, so now this last one works the same way. If you want to stop the video and try it yourself, the last one works the same way, but we'll do it again. I'm going to take the 4, multiply it by the 3. It's going to change it to a 12. I know it's going to factor into a binomial. I'm going to have a y and a y here, but I'm going to have to divide by that 4 because I changed the problem. So now I have to come up with the two numbers that multiply to give me 12 that are going to add to give me 8. And those two numbers are going to be 6 and 2. So a positive 6 and a positive 2. Okay, so now for this one, I have fractions on both of them, so I need to reduce them before I do anything else. We always reduce our fractions. So that's going to give me a y plus 3 over 2 and a y plus 1 half. All right, and then I can bottoms up again. Both of them have fractions, so both of them are going to get bottomed up, and that's going to give me a 2y plus 3 and a 2y plus 1. And again, 
you can check it and it's going to check out. If you check this, you get the 4y squared plus 2y plus the 6y plus 3 and that gives you 4y squared plus 8y plus 3, which is what we started with. So my answer does, in fact, check. Okay, so we're going to solve these two equations, but we're going to use factoring to solve. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor, and then we're going to set each factor equal to zero. and solve. So factoring of course is the main thing. So this is a trinomial and it's going to factor into two binomials with the x and the x and then I need two numbers that multiply to give me 35 that subtract to give me 2. That's going to be 7 and 5 and it's going to need to be a negative 7 and a positive 5 to get the negative 2. So that's factored. Now we'll take each factor and set them equal to zero. So we x minus 7 equals zero and x plus 5 equals zero. We'll solve each one of these. Solve the first one by adding 7 to both sides and we'll solve the second one by subtracting 5 on both sides. And so those are my two answers, 7 and negative 5. Alright, the next one um, requires the bottoms up factoring, so we'll be a little more careful on this one, so that'll be a 56. And to factor this one, again, it's a trinomial, so I'm going to put the x and the x here. Remember, I'm going to come in here and divide by 8. Alright, and so now um, we're going to find two numbers that multiply to give me 56, and subtract to give me 10 and those numbers which you may or may not know but those numbers are 14 and 4. It'll be a plus 14 and a minus 4 to get me the 10. Okay and so now I've got to reduce these so that's going to give me x plus 7 over uh, 4 and this would give me x minus one half. Okay, technically I'm not finished factoring. I'm going to do my little bottoms up. Before x, change the color. 4x plus 7 and 2x minus 1 equals 0. Check your factoring and it works. And now we're going to take each factor, set them equal to zero, and solve. So I have 4x plus 7 equals zero. Subtract 7 on both sides. And then divide both sides by 4. And I get x is negative 7 over 4. Hmm, that looks familiar. And then do the other one, 2x minus 1 equals zero. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and then I'll divide both sides by 2, and I get x is 1 half. Also very familiar. Well, it should be. It should be very familiar. Um, we're going to have those same answers right there in our factoring. Shortcut. Okay, so now these two problems we're going to solve by square root. The steps are isolate the squared part then we're going to root both sides and this is going to be a positive and a negative and then solve for the variable. Okay, so the first one, to get the squared part by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 6. It gives me x squared is equal to 4. And now, to get x by itself, I'm going to root both sides. I get x is equal to positive and negative 2. So those are my answers 
So X is already solved for, so it's just 2 and negative 2. Those are my answers for this one. For the second one, I've got to, um, I've got the squared part isolated already, but this time I'm going to root both sides. And so when I root both sides, I get X plus 4 on one side and positive and negative 5I on the other side. Be careful, make sure you understand why it's 5I and not just 5. And remember, it's always positive and negative. All right, so now that is going to break it into two problems. That's going to be x plus 4 equal 5i and x plus 4 equal negative 5i. And so now I'm going to solve these. I'm going to subtract 4. And because they're not like terms, I can't do this one. So that would be a negative 4 plus 5i. And the second one, again, I'm going to also subtract 4. And again, I can't do that, but it's going to give me a negative 4 minus 5i. Those are my two answers. I can write them connected as negative 4 plus or minus 5i.